surfacing the surface, some new lighting, some new plumbing, and we thought it would be best to kind of like clue you guys in to know that this doesn't like, bam, like happen overnight, that this is kind of like an arduous process that takes a little bit of sweat. And so we're going to get into it now. Um, I think the first thing that we're going to talk about is the glass. So uh, let's get into that. So this is one of the original tanks that was built in 1955. The word is, is that this concrete actually was built out of beach sand from down there at, at Half Moon Bay. And it's for, you know, 40 or 50 years worth of concrete, it's held up pretty well. But at some point, the original glass was gone. It, it disappeared and it was replaced with quarter inch plexiglass. Here's a sample of it right here. It's not the smartest thing because this little quarter inch piece of plexi is all that really kept you as a visitor from certain octopus or shark death or tidal wave drowning. Um, but the worst part of it is, is that um, it scratches and it discolors and you really can't see into the tank at all. The plexiglass bows when it's filled, the water pressure is such that it actually bows out and it creates leaks that can never really ever be it can really never ever be repaired. You drain the tank, you fix the leaks with silicone or some sort of goo, but you fill it back up and the, and, and the pressure changes and it flexes that goo that you put on there and that leak is still going to be there. So we're replacing this, but this baby here, a new piece of glass is about 300 bucks plus tax and times five there's five windows to this tank there ain't no way at all we're going to be able to afford that but we came up with a solution a really dang creative solution here because we here at the Westport Aquarium we have an adage we have, we're not non we're, we're not we're not non-profit at all we're just a private aquarium. We're just um, uh, no profit. Uh, so um, we're in a really tight budget, you know. So we came up with a really good solution. We're going to take a look at that brilliant solution. So here we have these tanks here that were uh, built circa 19. 1980, and they were built as a solution to an older problem. It was a good solution, but the problem is, is that they're narrow and they're deep. They're hard to clean. They're hard to display fish in. It's like displaying fish in a weed thin's cracker box the wrong way, you know, the long way. So these four tanks are coming out. One, two, three, four. We're going to be putting in a jellyfish tank. We're going to be putting in a tide pool tank. But the good thing is, is that each one of these tanks is a piece of glass that we can reuse. It took us uh, about four weeks to figure out exactly how we could reuse it, but we can reuse it. So I've already taken out three of these glass panels and Folks, it, it wasn't easy, you know, it, it wasn't easy, but I'm going to show you how not easy it is, right, right here in a few minutes. Um, we have one more to take out, I've already taken out three, we have one more to go. We're going to take out the glass panel, hopefully, and we're going to cut it down to size so it fits in the new renovated octopus. For a two-pack set. All right. So the 
deal is, is that this glass was set in silicone in. It's been sitting like that for like 30 years plus. The glass extends about two inches beyond this plywood surround. And there's a good quarter inch with the silicone in there that we have to break the release without breaking the glass in there. So the first thing you know, I'm going to be doing is uh, just taking a scraper and just uh, get rid of some paint, kind of like uh, leaking that glass up to let, to let it know that I'm going to be uh, saying good morning to it, you know. Get rid of some paint kind of like break some of the sponge out around it. And the first time I did this, I just did it out of brute force without chemical adherence. But then there's a dude in the UK that clued me in on his uh, blog entry on the use of WD-40. And I don't know the exact reaction that happens with WD-40 and, and old silicone, but it does seem to release the silicone from the glass and the wood somewhat. But the main thing I think that really helps is that it acts as a lubricant for sliding stuff in and breaking the silicone. So, what I'm going to be doing is some Slim Jim tricks here. The same way that uh, you break into a car, you know, which, you know, most of us have done at one point or another. Um, we need to find something pretty skinny, like this fellow. It could be, it could be thinner this way, but last time I did it, I broke it off. And so, anyway, this is the last one I have. Hopefully it'll work. The other uh, really important tool that I use are, 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 the, are these gloves. Because on the first one I did, I was able to release the glass from the plywood without breaking the glass. And I was also able to uh, bore a pretty significant clean one inch hole into my hand. Um, this was about, I don't know, maybe two days ago, and it's healed well since then. But since then, I've uh, decided to uh, use gloves. <sighs> Probably my mom would think it was most prudent and I should have thought of that in the first place, but I didn't. So, this whole process is probably going to be edited into like a 30 to maybe 60 second montage with a lot of profanity edited out um, because it does take a fair amount of profanity but what I'm doing is I'm sliding gingerly at first sliding this skinny guy up between the plywood and the glass oh, to uh, try to get through it um, on the first go around I'm using the skinniest tool I can find, the thinnest gauge of uh, sheet metal I can use. Later on, I'm going to be using a, I'm going to be using a, a thicker fellow. This guy is uh, used mainly for uh, scraping nasty stuff off of walls or whatnot. It's pretty thick. If I already use it right now. Because this is my first cut, I'm afraid that there'd be too much pressure, and I would probably end up busting the glass, which is a thirty, which is a three hundred dollar hit, and it's for me, and it's pretty disastrous right now. So uh, I gotta use this guy at first. At some point, I'm probably gonna be ending up. Oh, um, off my uh, oh, my yellow shirt and uh, drinking and swearing a lot. Oh, mercy. Oh, golly.
I'm going to start to shy. Okay, this fellow is almost ready to come out now. Almost. I'm about 300 pounds of love and lovely joy here. So sometimes you can gingerly force it to adhere to your will. Cheers.